Well, we've done a lot of really important work in the climate change unit, and this is lesson eight. We're going to continue with some big ideas in science. This is a lesson for sixth grade scientists, and it's lesson eight of Earth's Changing Climate Unit. The title of today's lesson is Analyzing Climate Change Data. To help you with today's lesson, you're going to need someone to talk to, something to write on, and also an article about a debate surrounding climate change from Amplify Science. Okay, so the question that we're investigating today is what evidence do scientists use to support their ideas and their claims about climate change? And so in the last couple of lessons, we have looked very carefully at some of the data and also use the SIM to see that there is a connection between the carbon dioxide molecules in the atmosphere and the amount of energy that is absorbed by Earth's surface and isn't able to exit out of the system at the same rate as if it wasn't there. We also saw that in methane. So these two graphs are showing a couple of different things. One on the y-axis, that's the up and down axis. It says concentration in parts per million. And the title is carbon dioxide. And we can see the years from about 1880 all the way up until this graph goes to looks like about 2008. So this data is about 10 years old, but you can see this trend, which is that the carbon dioxide seems to be increasing in Earth's atmosphere. But why? Why is that happening? And we see the same thing uh, with methane. The concentration in parts per million is increasing over time. So when we were doing some explorations in the last seven lessons of this unit, we definitely saw that there is in the sim, some evidence that shows that human activities can lead to an increase in these two gases. But that's not actual data. That is a simulation. And scientists use simulations all the time to, to predict the future, to see what might be happening. But what we need to do is look at actual data. So today's lesson, we'll be analyzing this data to see if there is a connection between the things that humans are actually doing on our planet and how carbon dioxide and methane might be changing. So in the last lesson, we learned a little bit about combustion. We discovered that the definition for combustion is the process of burning fuels that produces heat and for many fuels, carbon dioxide. So if you didn't see lesson seven, then, then you can learn this word along with us now. The other thing that we discovered in lesson seven is that cows and sheep are just eating grass all day long and farting out methane, which is a gas that can cause energy to not be able to leave that Earth's atmosphere. It's redirected in the atmosphere and sometimes it's redirected back to Earth. And so let's take a look at some actual data and see if there are human activities that are affecting these two gases. So as we're looking at these next couple of graphs, I want you to compare these graphs with the carbon dioxide and methane graphs that we saw here, which is that these two gases are increasing over time. So this first graph is for the United States fossil fuel combustion per person. And you can see that this data starts about 1900. And at that time, um, the graph was here and we can see that there are some big fluctuations but that over time it seems to be increasing. And so this graph shows that in the United States, the fossil fuels that we are burning in the atmosphere is, um, is happening at an increased rate in the last 100 years. So that's similar to what we saw in the data. Now this is only one country, um, so we would want to maybe look at some other data as well. Let's see um, a more global graph. So this global graph is about all of the ice in the Arctic. So that's going to be more than just the United States. There's other countries that are in the Arctic Ocean. And the sea ice that's there, um, we can see that a million square kilometers of ice in about 1980. Um, and I can see that this decrease in the amount of sea ice since about 1980 is what this graph shows. So this is showing that while carbon dioxide and methane are increasing in our atmosphere, the amount of sea ice on Earth is going down. So another thing that we looked at in the sim was the number of people on our planet. And we saw that in the sim, when the amount of people increased, that the... Um, carbon dioxide and methane also changed. And we can see that as carbon dioxide and methane have been increasing on our planet, 
um, the number of people have been increasing. So as the number of people goes up, the amount of carbon dioxide and methane that they produce goes up. Although you can change the settings in the sim. And we found that our population on our planet, even if it increases, if humans decrease the amount of combustion or livestock that they're consuming, then that can also make a difference. So let's look at one last um, data. And this is about uh, world grass eating livestock. So that would be grass eating animals like sheep and cows. And the number of animals in the millions um, is, has been steadily increasing since about 1960. And so when we were exploring the sim, we were looking at a simulation, but when we look at this data, we can see that um, it definitely seems to be reflecting that as the number of humans and their human activities are increasing over time, that the amount of carbon dioxide and methane is also changing. So what does this all mean? Scientists have been looking at this data, and as we've discussed in the past, there have been times where scientists don't always agree. And we're going to be reading an article right now that's called The Global Warming, A History of Hot Debate. And to get a copy of this article, you can do one of two things. If you are a sixth grader in Seattle schools, you can just go to your Amplify account, go by clicking on Clever and then opening, opening up the library on Amplify, going to Earth's Changing Climate Unit and choosing the article called Global Warming, A History of Hot Debate. If you're not a sixth grader in Seattle schools, then you can go to the Seattle schools website, which is seattleschools.org slash academics slash curriculum slash science. And when you get there, scroll down to middle school and then download the lesson eight packet for Earth's Changing Climate Unit. And I've put a copy of the article there that you can read with this. So let's take a look at this article and see what kind of debate scientists have been having about this. Okay. Here's the article. It says, Today scientists around the world agree that our planet is warming and that the rise in temperature is due to human activities over the past 200 years. However, this level of agreement hasn't been around long. For hundreds of years, nobody knew exactly how carbon dioxide was affecting the planet or what kinds of effects humans had on the natural world. Many scientists had competing ideas that took centuries to work out. Beginning in the 19th century, scientists understood that carbon dioxide and a few other gases in the atmosphere affected energy in the Earth's system. They took measurements of the air in the atmosphere and Earth's temperature and found that global temperatures went up as the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere increased. In 1896, a Swedish scientist named Savante Arrhenius calculated that doubling the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would cause a temperature increase of five to six degrees Celsius. Whoa. Um, oh, and that's nine to 11 degrees Fahrenheit. While cutting the amount, sorry, while cutting the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in half would be enough to cause a new ice age. Whoa. The relationship between these gases in the atmosphere and the global temperatures had become increasingly important in the 19th century as the first large factories began putting more, began putting much more pollution into the air than before. The growth of factory made goods and then the automobile meant that the atmosphere contained far more carbon dioxide than it had in any of human history. This picture here has a caption that says, when making goods in factories became more common, Scientists began research to research the effect of burning fuel on the atmosphere and on global temperatures. In the 20th century, scientists around the world studied the relationship between pollution in the atmosphere and Earth's temperature. However, they did not always agree about whether the carbon dioxide added to the atmosphere by humans would have an effect on global temperatures, or about what those effects might be. Some agreed with Arrhenius and predicted warming due to carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Others predicted that other types of pollution might cause the planet to cool rather than heat up. Some types of pollution include tiny particles floating in the air, which block some of the sun's energy from reaching Earth's surface. They thought this cooling effect might be stronger than the heating effect of the carbon dioxide. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Oh because then you'd have less energy entering Earth's system. Okay. To determine what's really happening with Earth's atmosphere, scientists around the world needed much more precise data. 
That kind of data became easier to get as computer technology improved and scientists were able to use better models to test their ideas. With the help of computers, the evidence began to show clearly that increases in gases like carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere happened at the same time as temperatures around the planet began to rise. And we've, we've looked at this graph before, and the caption says, this graph shows the change in global temperature in degrees Celsius between the years 1880 and 2009. Today, scientists agree that Earth is getting warmer quickly, and that the rise in temperature is due to carbon dioxide and other gases released in the atmosphere by human activities. As technology improves today and in the future, scientists will learn even more about our effects on the planet and how we can solve some of the problems we've created. However, that, that is not enough to change how humans affect the planet. Scientists can describe the consequences of our actions, but society needs to decide what to do with that knowledge. So over the next couple of lessons, we're going to take a look at some things that we can encourage society to do to take action on climate change. So now that we have a rich understanding of what's causing the temperature on our planet to increase, the ice on our planet to decrease, the levels of carbon dioxide and methane to change over time and increase in the atmosphere, we can try to come up with some ideas of how to solve this problem. So over the next few lessons, we'll look at five different possible solutions and how we can communicate that to our community.